So we talked about it a bit in the last day here about some of the stuff we still have coming in terms of content for the Modern Warfare 2 multiplayer weekend 2 and how things like ground war are becoming more weapons, modes and all. But today we saw our first bit of communication beyond, hey, here's where you can report feedback and bugs, directing to Reddit from Infinity Ward. And they actually laid out some of the gameplay changes we can expect to see for weekend 2. So today we're breaking it down. As we go along, drop your thoughts down below. I'm sure that some of this stuff is going to be incredibly divisive. So let me know how you feel about some of these upcoming gameplay changes. If you enjoyed the video, you find it at all insightful, do me a favor and drop a like on it. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe to stay today with all things Modern Warfare 2. We've got so much upcoming that you won't want to miss between the rest of the beta, building up to launch and then beyond. So if you'd like to join us on the road to half a million subscribers while staying up to date with everything, I'd love to have you in the community. And finally, check out my friends over at Gamer Advantage for the best blue light glasses on the market, but more on them a little bit later. For now, though, let's talk about this update that Infinity Ward gave us. This comes directly from their blog following the Weekend 1 wrap up here of the beta in a post entitled Modern Warfare 2 Community Update Beta Weekend 1. Now, to start, they basically just say like, hey, thanks for playing. You can report feedback and bugs on the socials. Here's a few things we already fixed, like crashes, gameplay exploits, geo and lighting issues, progression and gunsmith bugs, stuff like that. But then they detailed some of the things up coming. The first of which being the minimap, where they stated, currently in the Modern Warfare 2 beta, we only show enemy player dots when a UAV is active. The design reason for this is that we do not want to punish players for firing their weapons. We also want players to actively search out the origin of a gunshot versus just traveling directly to where the dot is on the minimap. We continue to gather feedback on how the game is playing in regards to this topic. So first off, this does not seem like it's going to change at all. This is one of those things that it's kind of just like, hey, this is our intent on it. And even though we hear your feedback, we're probably not going to change it. Personally, I'd be very curious as to why their prior reasoning has always been data, how the player subsets affected by this outweigh those vocally asking for change out of the last couple of years. I'd love to be a fly on the wall for that because I cannot imagine that it deters that many players that much, especially when you have things like suppressors, ghost as a perk and other ways to counter. If you fire your weapon, as they say, you should be giving up your position. In my opinion, you should be taking that risk to get that kill and move on in your streak. That's why you have gameplay counters like suppressors that make that gun choice more useful, why it has value to it. I also don't understand why we can't just like test it out for weekend two going forward, because I mean, even in the settings that have already been found, there's a way to just turn it off and on for private matches. So on a top level, can't you just do that for the overall game? And also I'd wager the CDL rule set has them on. So like, why? That's one that I don't know that I will understand, but that's something that they finally at least mentioned. I don't agree with it at all, but I mean, I guess I've been asking for communication and they gave their piece, just not what I wanted to hear. Target tracking was the next thing they talked about, though, moving on, because that was a big issue that a lot of players were having, not only just from visibility, but also the sense of whenever you shoot, that muzzle smoke was way too obstructive. They stated, we've seen feedback that it's hard to track targets once you get into a firefight. We agree this is an issue and we have changes incoming to reduce muzzle smoke opacity and to increase the visibility of the muzzle flash to help engage someone who is firing at you. These changes should help with tracking your opponents in combat, and they also stated we are also investigating more ways to visually differentiate enemies and friendlies outside of the standard nameplate above heads of the opposing player. We'll be trying a few new changes in Weekend 2, more on that later this week. Now, for that, that nameplate visibility, I think that was bugged. I didn't get any nameplates for enemies at all, so that actually might just be something that if we get the enemy nameplates, that might just fix it out entirely, but... I don't know about you guys, but I know that I wasn't seeing them on my end. That's a big change, though, and a big W, I think, for the muzzle smoke, reducing that opacity, making it easier to track enemies. So I'm all for trying that out in Weekend 2. The UI, though, user interface, they stated, we've seen feedback around the difficulty editing perk packages, managing loadouts, and accessing the armory. We have identified some UX issues as well as some bugs. These are things that we won't be able to adjust in time for Beta Weekend 2, but they're on the top of our mind going into launch. So while we won't see anything changed here in regards to Weekend 2 in a couple of days, we will end up seeing, hopefully, Hopefully some changes made for the launch and if it's not a somewhat redesigned to this overall at least some of these bugs that may kick you out of menus and stuff that should be fixed out Perks, though, this is another interesting one here in which they said we've seen varied feedback on the perk package system. Some players love it and others feel it's an unnecessary departure from the original system. That alone, I feel is very accurate. I think I've seen feedback both ways here. Personally, while I'm not a fan, I can understand why others would. But they continued, we feel it's a nice shakeup of how perks work into the general progress of the match. We've also balanced the ultimate perks to be more powerful as you earn them later on in the match. And that's one thing that if I can interject before finishing this, I will say that things like Ghost, I did like that for the first 
part of the match. While I wasn't a fan of the progressive rollout of perks, I liked that my UAV was going to showcase everybody for the first couple of minutes, at least. Now, they stated they'll continue testing throughout Beta Weekend 2, including drastically accelerating the earn rate of these to see how players react. Our goal remains improving the flow of all perks ahead of launch. That's something that I'm very curious as to what these changes will be. Drastically to what degree? Will that be something that is like we get all of them up front? Honestly, I really like the idea of four perks. I like the feel of it. It's just that progressive rollout that's weird to me. But would it be something we get those all up front where they take off the time to delay entirely? Will it be we get them in like two and four minutes base as opposed to the four and eight minute base that we have right now? Will it be three up front with that one earned ultimate perk throughout the game? We just don't have any insight, but I'm glad that we're at least seeing something new to try out. Dead Silence, they essentially said, yeah, it's not changing. They stated Dead Silence is another hot topic as many players have expressed that they would like to see it as a perk instead of a field upgrade. We believe it is important to the game health that rushers are not able to move at high speeds without consequence. Dead Silence as a field upgrade creates a balance between freedom of movement and predictability of combat. See... I kind of understand that, but also, again, there can be many different gameplay counters. Add a sort of ninja perk that allows footsteps to be muffled, but still audible, or add an awareness perk that allows that sort of hard counter. That's an issue that's been done before, so I don't see why we can't revisit that with this. Though, to follow up on a little audio, for footsteps, they did tackle this a little bit, stating that footstep audio in week one of the MP beta was very high, giving players long distance directional information about enemies. I kind of felt it was inconsistent. I was definitely hearing some people at some times, but others, not so much. For weekend two, we have some changes coming in. We are reducing the range of footstep audio for the various player movement states, jog, sprint, and tactical sprint. This will help soften the cost of moving around the map. The second change is that the enemy and friendly footsteps are now distinct. This should help players better understand what's going on as things move around them on the battlefield. More details to follow. And finally, they closed out things with the slides and slide canceling, stating sentiment around the removal of slide canceling remains positive. We are aware of the workaround and are contemplating how to handle it for weekend two of the beta. Additionally, we have some other slide changes for launch, which will make this movement feel a bit more fluid and snappy. So I don't know what that means for a long term big picture. It kind of seems like there may be a compromise in the pipeline. But for right now, it doesn't seem like weekend two is going to see any major drastic differences. Now, that said, that's some big stuff that they did tackle on a top down level. They didn't give us any sort of bug fixes coming here for weekend two, anything like that on a smaller scale. But for the most part, I'm intrigued to see what they do with weekend two. Again, don't agree with the minimap thing. I don't understand why that's such an issue to at least test it out. Perks, I'm OK with those changes to hear that more things are being considered and feedback can kind of dictate where that goes. And that other stuff I'm just kind of on the fence with. So so we got a lot of details in that regard, but one thing that I'm also really curious about is that it seems like they mentioned later on in the week we'll end up getting more here. And so I'd imagine that's tomorrow, maybe Thursday with the launch of Weekend 2 for the beta and crossplay that we'll see another blog post coming detailing all the changes from Weekend 1 to Weekend 2. And if that's the case, of course, we'll keep it to date with everything. But for now, that is where we're at here at this. But before we wrap everything up, check out my friends over at Gamer Advantage. I've been talking about them for a year and a half, almost two years at this point, and I will still swear by them. If you work at a PC, you look at a screen for any kind of prolonged periods of time a day, you may already have felt the effects of blue like myself. I've had trouble combating it for the years. The whole YouTube creator lifestyle isn't as crazy or chalked up as a lot of people make it out to seem. I'm not out there at the club partying every day, every night or anything like that. I'm at my desk predominantly 10 to 12 hours a day working on content, whether that be noting, researching, scripting, editing, grabbing gameplay, but I'm looking at a screen for a long time. So having used blue light glasses in the past, I will tell you firsthand, Gamer Advantage is absolutely my advantage. They are head and shoulders above any of the competition. They're the most comfortable, durable, and lightweight frames on the market, which make them a great choice for all day use. And their lenses are clinically proven. I can't convey the science behind it near as well as they can. So if you guys would like to learn more, check the link in the description below and head on over to their website. And if you guys want to pick up something for yourself, using code ESPRESSO nets you 10% off your entire order. But that said, that is where we're going to call it. So drop your thoughts below. I'd love to hear your feedback here on this, what you think of these changes you're looking forward to weekend two, whatever the case, drop it down below. But if you enjoyed the video, you found it at all insightful, do me a favor and drop a like on the video. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss a single thing running all things Modern Warfare 2, Beta Weekend 2, and beyond. We'll keep you the date with everything, so if you'd like to join the community, I'd love to have you. That's it. Thanks so much for watching. My name is Espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace.